hopefully everyone can see this slide about the basic DSM. And I'd like you to uh, focus on first these uh, diagonal elements in the square matrix. Just want to remind everyone that a DSM is the same number of rows and columns, always a square matrix. And we have off diagonal elements that allow you to see relationships among these. So these relationships can be directional. Like we look down a column to see outputs from an element. We see that uh, element B, for example, provides an output that becomes then an input to element C. And similarly, looking at the column for element C, we see its output becoming an input for element B. Uh, it's directional because we can distinguish these relationships and show, for example, that element A provides an output to element B, but not vice versa. So the shaded diagonal squares represent the elements, the off-diagonal marks represent relationships, and this is but one convention for reading and writing a DSM, but we'll stick with it for consistency. And note that these relationships can be asymmetric. If you're familiar with a flowchart or a node link diagram or a directed graph, it's fairly straightforward to translate from one to the other. Uh, I think most of us, when we start looking at networks and flow, we tend to start with probably the most intuitive format, which is a, a flowchart or a node link diagram. But the challenge is that as our models get larger and more complex, uh, we start to uh, realize in this world of complexity where so many relationships exist among elements that we quickly violate the basic rules of flow charting, like not having arrows cross each other. Here, even in this node link diagram that's happening, and then as we get to much more complex systems that challenge us today, we find that we need a better representation to find the important patterns in the system. So that's really the main reason for DSM. It's a simple, concise representation that highlights some key patterns like modularity or cyclicality that matter to the behavior and performance and value provided by our systems, whether they're products, organizations, processes, or other. Moreover, this representation, because of its simplicity, maybe just because it's different, uh, maybe because of these patterns that are highlighted, it prompts systems thinking, situation awareness, and new types of analysis and innovation that can be very valuable. 